Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's Sunday, August 1st, 2021. Let's have a few quick words on a fight I did not make a prediction video for, a fight I did not bet on, but a fight I enjoyed watching, and a fighter you need to keep an eye on. In fact, keep an eye on both of these fighters. It was heavyweight Jonathan Rice <clears throat> handing Michael Coffey his first loss, and he does so by stoppage. Let's talk about this fight. I believe the boxing hardcore has a lot to like in this fight, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> now, in an earlier video that I made today, in discussing Jack Cullen over Avniel Dura, I talked about how, while Jack Cullen gave a great performance, I did not like his center of gravity, that he was giving away his height, that he was leaning into the pocket, that I would have preferred if he had a different center of gravity, an Ali Vitali Klitschko center of gravity where he leaned backwards, right? The argument I was making was if a tall guy <clears throat> can lean backwards, it really forces his opponent to have to reach all the way across the pocket to try to get him. Let me also point out, too, that there is a peril in reaching across the pocket to get a guy who's leaning back out of it. If you miss, you're wide open for a counter, right? A guy who can lean backwards for defensive purposes is going to have opportunities to counter you that a guy leaning forward in the pocket's not going to have. <clears throat> now here, Jonathan Rice, and I know he's lost some fights, right? I understand that. I understand he got decisioned by Efi Agaba, for example, right? I get that, right? I also understand that he gets tired in fights. He's been stopped late in a couple of fights. Okay, fine. And I understand he's 34 years old. Let me just point out that in the heavyweight division, heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. Let me also point out that Jonathan Rice, the guy who scored the upset over Michael Coffey, has an excellent center of gravity. In other words, <clears throat> he's 6'5". Right? In other words, he's a tall man. You might not realize it from this fight because the other guy's 6'5". But he's a tall man who understands spacing. So he's far away from you to begin with. Then you'll notice as Coffee, who has a punch, tries to hit him, Rice is leaning backward. Right? And so Coffee, who doesn't want to be in the pocket, trading blows, has too far a distance to go to land a haymaker on Rice. Let me also say, too, and this is important, Rice can lead with power shots. He has a here trigger, straight right hand up top. This fight is worth watching just to see how Rice can quickly turn and throw that straight right hand with power. In other words, everything's deceptive. This is a chess player. You look at him and you say, hey, his feet are not set. There's no way he can get power on the shot. Then Rice will turn. The feet suddenly get set. I'm sure Rice, outside the ring, has a lot of rhythm, is a good dancer, right? Because he can get his feet in position in the blink of an eye. And then he throws that straight right hand. Again, this is a... 6'5 guy weighing 270 pounds, and he's pinpoint with it, right? So this is a guy with a number of losses, but this is the kind of underdog guy who you understand might be able to upset more people who are low volume. Let me say, too, it's interesting because coffee is usually higher volume than this, but coffee gets hit with that straight right hand so many times in the very early rounds, first round, he gets hit with that straight right hand multiple times. 
So he decides he's going to change the angles. But understand, not all ambidextrous fighters are created equally. <coughs> A fighter like Tyson Fury can switch from righty to lefty and still have a jab, right? When Tyson Fury goes southpaw, Tyson Fury's right hand, his dominant hand, he can actually pump as a jab. He's still coordinated. He can still throw volume. He can still dodge your punches. What we learned with Michael Coffey is that when he goes southpaw, he loses volume. He doesn't have the great jab from the southpaw position. So what you have is a fight here where he's playing a chess player. Johnny Rice is way outside. Right? Understand, Rice can be way outside because Rice has what I call ring coverage. In other words, when he turns on a dime, and throws that overhand right hand, he can cover a lot of ground. Understand, you have the kind of guy with feet where he can just move that left leg way out in front of him and then turn and throw the straight right hand. So from distance, Rice has a distinct advantage over Coffey in a southpaw stance. What Coffey should have done, hindsight's 100%, is he should have stayed right-handed, but he should have realized that he needed to protect himself from Rice's straight right hand. Force Rice to throw his left hand. Right? Or figure out that Rice is staying outside. He doesn't want you inside. Try to get inside. Instead, Coffee makes the mistake of going southpaw, which further plays into Rice's strength, right? Because from what I saw, Southpaw, Coffey has no ring coverage, doesn't have volume. So Rice outside is even safer with Coffey in a Southpaw stance. Now, Rice was a late replacement in this fight. This is another lesson. Late, late replacements might be very dangerous, because the favored fighter, the unbeaten fighter, which is who Coffee was, just wasn't prepared for Rice's unorthodoxy. Right, so keep an eye on Johnny Rice. Right, right now he's in the opponent category. Right, fans aren't demanding to see Johnny Rice against Anthony Joshua. Right, but just understand, this is a guy who is big who is cerebral, who is very sudden, and I mean very sudden, with that straight right hand, he's a chess player. In other words, you can't go off his body language, right? He looks like he's just walking around outside, then suddenly, here's a straight right hand in your face, right? He knows he has good legs. You don't. You look at him, you think, oh, this, this big guy can't move that fast, then you find out he's like Heavy D, right? He's like Jackie Gleason. He's like an NFL offensive lineman, right? He may look big, but the guy is agile, right? Johnny Rice should go in your list of live underdog fighters, right? Let's face it, too. The size is going to be a problem for a lot of people. Right? A lot of fighters are going to enter the ring, see this guy's size, they're not going to want to hunt him down. Understand, too, his defense is better than advertised. Right, He faced a KO puncher, Effie Agaba, he went the distance with him, and Agaba is one of the hardest punchers in the entire sport. Right, In other words, if you're a robotic fighter, Johnny Rice is going to be able to figure out your rhythm. Again, this is the poker player in boxing. Boxing has a few of them, right? Where looks are deceiving. You see him, you say, oh, he's too big to be agile. No, no, he's agile. 
You see him, you say, oh, he's too far outside to hurt me. Then that straight right hand is up on your chin because this guy has a drop step that can allow him to cover a lot of ground with the punch, right? Think David Hay, right? So this fight is worth looking at. Also, some of these fighters are a bit overhyped, right? I'm usually impressed when I see a Tyson Fury or a Terrence Crawford suddenly switch hands, right? A Lomachenko suddenly switch hands, right? You say, oh, this guy's ambidextrous. Oh, this is dope. Here, Michael Coffey switches hands. Player, you should have practiced that southpaw stance more in the gym. It was not ready for a televised fight. It certainly wasn't ready for Jonathan Rice. Also, what I found, and you saw this in the Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz first fight. Some of these highly touted fighters, right? Some of these unbeaten fighters aren't accustomed to being methodically outboxed, right? When they're Goliath, when they're doing well, they're monsters. But when, thing go, when things go poorly, they don't know how to act. They don't know how to interact with the referee, right? They haven't been on the short end of the stick enough. They haven't faced adversity enough to actually know what's expected in those situations. So, in the AJ fight, you know, the referee at one point is talking to AJ, right? After AJ's been knocked down, and the referee says, come to me. And you see AJ barely move, and you wonder why the ref let that fight continue, right? Somebody else who'd been knocked down who understands, hey, I have to convince this ref that I'm fit to fight, would answer the ref's questions. When the ref says, hey, step to me, that guy'd practically be running toward the ref, right? Well, here in this fight, the referee actually does Michael Coffey a favor. He's getting cuffed around, his volume is down, he looks like he has no answers, he looks like he can't see Jonathan Rice's right hand. So the ref actually starts talking to him, right? The ref comes over. Right? Without really stopping the action, the ref kind of comes over and like looks at him and you can tell the ref is looking at him. And Coffey looks at the ref to assure the ref that he's okay. But then Coffey does nothing. Right? Coffey goes back to getting cuffed around. So after he gets cuffed around a bit more, the ref who had warned him that he was concerned about his position, right? His condition. The ref steps in and stops the fight. I thought it was a good stoppage. I think as Coffey goes back through this film and asks himself, what can I do better? He's, he's going to have to realize, number one, he needs more volume. Number two, he has to realize that his southpaw game is not ready for prime time right now. Right? It's just not. Maybe he sees himself as Tyson Fury player. You're not Tyson Fury right now. He also has to realize that when the ref comes over to see if you're okay, that ref's concerned. <laughs> right? The next sequence is pivotal. You have to show the ref something because the ref can stop the fight. And that's what the ref did here after Coffey showed him nothing. Right? So big win for Jonathan Rice. He's an active underdog, right? If he's fighting against a guy who doesn't like to be deep in the pocket, who isn't high volume, Rice is likely to be undervalued. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.